Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquay of Living Streams, bringing you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. And this morning, I'd, I'd like to just title my um, topic for today, Tricky Conversations. Hey, you know, the, the God who we serve, he has a very interesting, uh, I mean, conversational slant that for me is, is befuddling. And it, it's, it's just, I can't understand it. Yeah, my mind gets befuddled by the, the kind of uh, conversations that he has with, I mean, uh, mortals. In Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 3, you remember, I mean, the Bible said um, uh, God uh, decided to carry a, a Ezekiel and he carried him to a place. And the Bible says when they got there, it was the Valley of Dry Bones. I mean, he carried him in the spirit. He carried him to the Valley of Dry Bones. And then when they got there, the Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 3, God engaged uh, uh, Ezekiel in a very tricky conversation. And I said to myself, what, what kind of, what, what, what is this conversation all about? Look at what God said. God looks at, you have placed him in a, in, 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 a, in a valley of dry bones. You have placed him in an uncomfortable place. You have pushed him into a place where he would not necessarily want to be. Who wants to go and fellowship with, 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 uh, in a cemetery? Or who wants to go and fellowship with dry bones of human of human beings dead, long gone, God then asks Ezekiel, can these bones live? Can these bones live? I mean, what kind of answer do you, do you expect from somebody? You have carried me against my will to this place. Now you are asking me whether these bones that are dry, dead, dry bones, whether they can live. He said, Lord, thou knowest. You, you know. I don't know. You know, I don't know. You know why, why you brought me here. You, you, know, you know whether there's possibility of life in this place. You know, I don't know. Now I found it very interesting and it was a tricky conversation because Ezekiel is supposed to be a prophet, a mighty prophet, a mighty, mighty prophet. I mean, not uh, I mean a minor prophet, but a major prophet after Isaiah. I mean, uh, Ezekiel runs apart in terms of stature with the Isaiahs and the Jeremiahs. I mean, those are major, major, major prophets. And then you, you ask him, can these bones live? What kind of question is this? Sometimes God introduces us in, in, in our walk towards our destiny, in our walk towards the places where he wants us to be. He introduces us to uncomfortable places and he introduces us to places where we would prefer not to be. He introduces us to situations we prefer not to be in those situations. And we would rather like something else if given a chance or an opportunity to express our opinion. But one way or the other, we find ourselves there because he carries us. He pushes us, willing or unwilling. He pushes us there. We get into clumsy situations. We get into sticky situations. We get into trying situations. We get into fearful situations. We get into issues. We get into things. Uh, of course, not we did it, but... He, he, one way or the other, orchestrates to place us there. And you know one thing? And sometimes he would turn and then ask you as if sneeringly, you know, with a sneer, do you think this thing can live? Do you think these bones can live? Do you think there can be a resolution to this impossible situation? Do you think that this thing, and you know what God is saying? He is asking Ezekiel a question of faith. Do you think an impossible situation can become possible? Do you think so? And Ezekiel didn't hesitate. He said, Lord, thou knowest. I don't know. And that means an admission by a prophet that I don't know everything. Sometimes when God is dealing with us and we're in some situations in which the unpalatable situations or situations that we, we, we prefer not to be in, refuse to be drawn into judgmental definitions of that particular place. Refuse to speak on those issues. You just say to God, I don't know what you are doing. Only you know what you are doing. I won't even hazard a guess. I won't even try to define. I won't try to explain to anybody. All I can say is that God is up to something I don't know. 
There are things I don't know. I'm, I'm a pastor. There are things that God does, especially sometimes in my life, I don't know. And I, I have no clue what he's up to. Leave room for the unexpected. Leave room for the surprise move of God. Leave room for the things that God wants to do that will outstand men and that will cause men to bow in worship and in honor and say, the Lord God is God. Listen, Ezekiel said, Lord, thou knowest. That whole conversation was very tricky to me. God knew what he wanted to do. God knew he was going to do something. But he's asking Ezekiel, do you think I can do it? Do you think these bones can live? And Ezekiel's statement is not a statement of doubt. It's not a statement of unbelief. It's a statement of trust. Lord, I don't know. You know. Well, Ezekiel was saying, you hold the key. You hold the knowledge. You hold the power. You hold the resolution. You hold the final say-so. You are the final say-so in this issue. Can we come to a place where we can look at God and say, I, I don't know what you're up to. You alone know. So you do what you have to. I just trust you. In the, in the year that we see, we will see some uncertainties. We will see some things that we don't have solutions to. We don't, we don't have a clue as to the possibility of those particular situations. Don't be in a rush to land in the valley of faithlessness and say, I'm giving up. You say to God, thou knowest. You alone know. You need to make that confession. Because when you make that statement, he looks at you and says, okay, so you trust me. I'm going to do something about it. This is what God does. Never be in a hurry to define some situations. Leave it into his hands. When people ask you, tell them, you know, sometimes God works... The, the, the handiworks of God are very fluid. You see a valley of dry bones today, the next day you see a mighty army. You see a, a, a dead man in a grave today, tomorrow he's resurrected from the dead and the stone has been rolled away. So they are in the dealings of God with us. Always make room for the fluid. Don't kick yourself up in faithlessness. Don't kick yourself up in doubt. Don't kick yourself up in discouragement. Don't kick yourself up in unbelief. Don't kick yourself up that way. Leave room for the unexpected because that's who God is. And you tell him, God, I don't know what you're doing. But you're the only one who knew. Tricky conversations. Send it back to him. See you later.